Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, in this week's Riff, what are we going to be talking about? It's the Mission 700 loudspeaker, Mike. Very good, very good. Classic brand. Absolutely. Been going a long time. Absolutely. Been making really good speakers for an awfully long time. Yeah, for a certain type of buyer. Without a doubt, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, you know, I'm going to put a little bit of a caveat on that because the... The, we did a recent riff on the Mission 770s, didn't yeah. we? And I thought they were really standout. I thought yes. they were absolutely amazing. I thought they were so um, really refined, proper grown-up speaker. Yeah. Uh, and actually, a little bit, I know where you were going with this, a little bit sort of flying in the face of these speakers, the yeah. 700s, and speakers, Mission speakers of yesteryear. Yeah. Because they're, they have always been a bit of a sort of... Uh, a bit, uh, how can I put it? What's a good word? Radio 1. A bit Radio 1. They're a bit Radio 1, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely not Radio 3 or 4. Yeah. Definitely very Radio 1. We're, we're talking and, 1970s and 80s Radio uh, 1. Yes, here, of course. So. Yeah, yeah. Sort of Mike Reed and, uh, yes. you know, people like that. And exactly. uh, uh, Steve Wright. Yeah. So, um, great fun. Quite uh, boisterous. Yep. Um, really sort of, uh, you know, eager to please speakers. Puppy dog enthusiasm. We've, we have, we have yeah. talked about them to be akin to a puppy dog before. Yeah. We have, yes. Uh, and sort of, you know, chomping at the leash, trying to get away. Yeah. Um, I think there's a case to be made here for uh, the synergy between amplifiers and speakers. Because I think if you're not careful, you could end up with something which is just an, an unmitigated disaster. Yes. with these speakers if you chose an uh, say an integrated amp which was <clears throat> bright um puppy dog itself it would just be two puppy dogs like a name that one <laughs> that would be terrible <laughs> now that would be such a bad combination it yeah. really would you need something a little bit more uh, mellow a bit more relaxed a yeah. bit more neutral maybe yeah um so, well, so. In, in the old days <clears throat> uh, when the original i think the original 700 came out in 1980 or 81 uh, recollections vary um, but uh, the original 700 was widely paired with the NAD 3020, the NAD 3020. Yes. Um, and, and that was yes. a great combination. It was, it was. Because um, the, the NAD was quite a sweet and warm sounding amp, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and and it, it sort of smoothed out and sweetened up a little bit yes. the, the emissions uh, sort of uh, tendencies to to sort of uh, you know um, sh shout a little bit I think in in the in the mid band. That's a really good really good yeah. call. I I reckon there's a lot of people out there who had something like a dual CS five hundred five, yeah, maybe a Riga two or three, yeah, um, and a NAD thirty twenty and a pair of emissions. Yeah, I, I bet that's a proper classic Absolutely. combination. Yeah, yeah. Um, and which I'm sure would stand up really well now. I'm I'm uh, sure it would too. Yes, uh, yeah, very surprisingly <clears throat> well I think. These yeah. these are these are not massively expensive in the grand scheme of no. things, are they? Looking well, at... I mean they're thirteen hundred pounds. Um, so obviously they're they're, they're um, made in uh, in China through IAG. They're mm. not the um, earlier kind of UK variant of Mission, um, which we knew you know until uh, until really the the, the early mid two thousands. Yeah. Um, and uh, they're the cheaper and more affordable version of the aforementioned 770s. 770s. Yes. Um, and it's very interesting to see the differences between them because um, it's, as I always say to anyone who can be bothered to listen to what I'm saying, um, <clears throat> it's much harder to make a, a, a £1,300 speaker than a £3,500 speaker. Sure, sure. Um, sure. And the, the problem is, um, as I'm sure the designer of these, Peter Como, will tell you, is that one of the biggest fixed costs of the speaker is the cabinet. Um, and um, with the 770, there's a lot of cabinet, uh, but the 700 is still quite big, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's um, a decent size. Yeah. It's, it's a decent size. Yeah, it's two-thirds <coughs> as large as my NS1000s, mm -hmm. almost. Yes. Um, and certainly much bigger than, you know, we would normally associate with a stand mount speaker these mm. days, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, can I just on that note? They, they I think they look terrific. Mm. Um, they're really well, well made. They're yeah. really well put together. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously the compromises in the the quality of the materials and the rigidity of the cabinet and yeah. all this stuff. But but in terms of their aesthetics, I think they're cracking. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're really nicely finished. We have we had a um, or have still a black and white pair. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, look, just looks super Brilliant. smart. Super, really, looks super really smart. cool. Very, it? very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Looking very speakers. retro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, come with nice stands too. Yeah, you know, decent, solid, solid pair of stands. Um, yeah, those are optional, <coughs> by the way. Um, yes, but, yes, uh, not in the thirteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. but, but strongly recommended. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I I like the look. Um, I, I think they're they're sort of you know fit in really nicely in the room. I, I like the size and the form factor. Yeah. Couple of unusual things. So obviously they're they're ported. They're front ported. Yeah. Um, and, and large port as well. Huge. Yeah. Huge great big yeah. thing. Um, but also they put the again they put the treble units in the middle. Yeah. Which is an interesting sort of design concept as well, isn't it? Yes. Well, the idea is to um, uh, have it as close as possible to ear height, yeah. isn't it? Because treble is going to be very directional. Yeah. Base. Yeah. You know, goes everywhere. Absolutely. The so, uh, I think the phrase you're looking for there is. Uh, Quote inverted driver geometry. Mike. There you are. So, there you are. So that's that, a, that was what you were fumbling around <coughs> yes, for in the back of your head. IDG. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's always an acronym so, in hi-fi, isn't there? Yes, exactly. Well, it's very eighties to have. <laughs> How those ironic kind of, is that? Thing is exactly. hi-fi is an acronym. Well, not always. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so look, I really like the sound of them, uh, but again, I just think you have to be really careful. So I I paired them with a few different combinations. So um, I used the exposure pre power combination. Yep. Um, which we've got, I think, uh, coming up in a riff. We have soon, yeah. um, and I used them with um, uh, with what else? Did I use them with. Um, I used them with a uh, my name Nate. I plugged my name Nate yeah. into them did as it, well. Did it match? Um, produce any sound? Did, from didn't them? like no. Didn't like okay. that at all. Uh, not in the least. I didn't use that for very much. But well, the exposure worked well. Yeah, the exposure absolutely. worked really, really well. Well, I mean, um, the, the exposure is, it, I would think, would be a great combination mm. and really would really suit it tonally yes. and in terms of load driving because one of the things that uh, I think uh, is probably worse than the original is the sensitivity. Um, so I think they're quoted at uh, 86 dB, uh, which is quite, well, it's not bad, but it's sort of on the lower side of, average for a for a, a speaker of you know a kind of um large-ish stand mount speaker um so they do need a bit of juice don't they they need a bit of um, yes it's funny because um, yeah. we were just having this conversation earlier today weren't we with tim mellow mm. from um from mellow mellow acoustics and uh you know he was saying how uh how amplifiers because amplifiers have got more, much more powerful over the years yeah. speakers are getting more and more inefficient yeah. and harder to drive yeah. so uh, it's, some interesting uh, uh, sort of conversations going on yeah. there but I also think it's a it's makes it quite recording dependent too yep. um, I've got a couple of you know slightly bright albums and it just didn't really work for me it was just too toppy just too too screamy for me yeah um but if you have a i know this is sort of twas always thus but if you have a well recorded album with these missions then they do work really really nicely yeah i think um you know i think m maybe this is just sort of us being a bit self-indulgent but if you go from the 770s to the 700s there's quite an, a noticeable drop down in there quality is, yeah, and yeah. they are less <coughs> well resolving and they are less smooth mm. um and um you can hear the cabinets a lot more um and i'm sure that that the people at mission and, and peter Como who designed them uh, will be screaming well that's because of the price yes you know and, of course and it's absolutely true yes um you know you know it's just kind of an observation in, in, in a general way uh and obviously many speakers at that price uh well, almost all speakers have that kind of issue as well. So, yeah. um, but the, the trouble is, the 770 for me was such a honey at its price point, uh, and it did everything so well, mm. uh, and it had no flaws that no, I could really no. hear. And then you you kind of put its baby brother, and you think, yeah, well, yes, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's almost like it, it would have been better in a way to have heard the oh, 700 absolutely. first, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and then be wild we, by the 770. We've, we've done them no justice at all there, have we? No, we, really we haven't. haven't. So. And, you know, but let's sort of get back to basics. It's a, it's just like the original 700. It's fun. It's peppy. It's full of. It's it's sort of full of get up and go. It makes music. You know, thump along. It's really good for pop and rock music, especially. I'd say probably not the most, uh, probably not the best thing for classical at that price. No, um, no. Uh, or, or maybe even jazz. Um, it's uh, it's not super refined, but you don't really 
doesn't really you don't really think of it because it's just fun listening to the music. Every day's a party with them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. And um, and so for that reason, it's good to match them with sympathetic amplifiers mm. and sources that that don't sort of take them out of their comfort zone in terms of uh, smoothness. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And in fact, you know, there's a Mike and Dave's top tip here as well, isn't there? So this is a buyer beware top tip. If your budget's thirteen hundred quid, don't listen to the seven seventy <laughs> because because yeah. you will want them. Or bring your credit um, card. <clears throat> exactly, yes, a hundred percent. But I think I think if you're if this is you know, if you're looking for a sub fifteen hundred pound speaker, um and, and it's particularly if you like that kind of genre of music, you yeah. know, rocky and fun yeah. and with a lot of life in them, then these are these are terrific. These are for you. Yeah, they're so. a, they're a character speaker. They and, are. And um, so mm -hmm. I, I one of the speakers I really love at that price point in terms of stand mounters is the Acoustic Energy AE five hundred. Um, I don't think you've heard them, Michael. We'll have to I get a pair yet, from yeah. from the guys at AE. Yes. But it's it's a it's a lovely little thing. It's very small um, and uh, it's got carbon fiber drivers. It's very clean and neutral and open. And then we've got the um, uh, we've got the neat uh, ministers, haven't we? Yes. Uh, which are the we we did the magistrates. Yes. Um, which are a bit more expensive. The ministers aren't you know roughly that kind of price point. Yeah. And then little sort of isobaric loaded um, speakers mm. with um, ribbon tweeters. Uh, ribbon tweeters. Yeah. And they're very sweet mm. as well. We really like the ribbon tweeters yeah. in those. We did. Yeah. Yeah. But both of those speakers and both of those I would have. You know, as my kind of desert island speakers. You know, if you're you're washed up on mm. a desert island, you can grab one pair of small, uh, you know, sure. stand mounters. Yes. Um, but the um, then they're, they're not arguably as fun as the seven hundreds. No. So the seven hundreds are party. You know, uh, sort of watch your bass bins. You know, let's have a Absolutely. good time. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, uh, that that's the thing. They they have a distinctly different flavour. They do, um, they do. And, and you buy them knowing that and enjoy them on that basis. They like being turned up, don't they? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Turn up and rock it out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, gutsy, and pretty cool. Gutsy amp, punchy pop or rock. Uh, having said that, yeah. you know, in terms of the, for the hi-fi stuff, um, they do an awful lot of things really well. I really like the bottom end. Um, I, I like. I thought the image really well. Yeah, uh, they I thought do. the dynamics were cracking. Yeah. You know, really, really good. Uh, so loads of things to like, loads of things which are, which are really yeah. you know box ticks. Yeah. Um, yes, the, the worst bit fantastic. is you haven't got another two thousand quid to spend on the uh, the seven seventies. <laughs> yes, yeah, it so is. It, it is. reminds you of uh, your your poverty and uh, yes, you know, kind of uh, your uh, your tragic plight. They're, they're Porsche boxsters, aren't they? You can't quite afford a nine eleven. <laughs> yeah, but that's actually a really good, a really good, uh, um, a really good analogy, isn't it? Yes. Like that's nice, uh, but what about the real one? Yes. You know. Yes. Um, exactly. And, uh, and yeah, I'm afraid the real one at twice the price. Peter Kerr has, has done such a brilliant job with the seven seventies that yeah. um, you know he set the bar very very high there. Yeah. Uh, I would I would quite happily live with a pair of those. Yes, they're, I know. You, you didn't stop rabbiting on about them for ages. <laughs> I know. And, and this, That's so not like me. Not, no, it's not like you. <clears throat> and even this is even when he had the ATC oh. SCM forties. Yes. Which he was basically he was like cheating on the ATCs. Yeah, I with did. Them, with yeah. the missions. I was. It felt awful. Yeah, um, I didn't sleep at night. So the, yeah. Um, they're, they're, and and we haven't even mentioned my my go my go to Saras as well. No? You know they're. No. You know, they were just sort of in in my in my lockup crying. I think. Well, you, so. you've been talking about your Lin Saras for like thirty years yeah. or something. Yes. And then it's like you completely forgot about them. I know. How bad is <laughs> so that? Normally, there's a they get mentioned in every hi-fi <laughs> chat. They do. Um, they oh, do. I bet that would sound good with my Saras. Uh, <laughs> then suddenly it's like, oh, I've forgotten about them. So <laughs> who's Sara? Yeah, exactly. Um, actually, they're back in the room. Oh, yeah. They're back in the room. Yeah. Um, I got them out back out yesterday, and yeah. uh, what did I say to you today? It's really nice to have my Saras. You did. I did. Yes. I did. Yes. They're really good, actually. So yeah. um, I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten I'm, how much I'm, I loved them. I'm, you, I'm going to start crying, Mike, in a minute. You <laughs> just better stop this. Yeah, song. reunited. Well, yeah, you did yeah. the you did the lover analogy. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so. uh, but um, so so missions, great, really cool. Uh, but buyer beware, you need to make sure that you've got some decent ancillaries which yeah, match it. Yeah, match them with a smooth source yeah. um, and, and buy them if, if you're into rock and pop and electronic 
Uh, but you know, if if it's the Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony you want to play, uh, it's probably not the best. There are probably better speakers to do it. And um, you know, um, turn turn them up, turn them up. They they like a good uh, like like a bit of power into them. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then just enjoy them really. Yeah, and and I think if I would I would quite happily sort of use them with something like say a chord mojo DAC. Yeah. Um, and um, let's say an exposure integrated. Yeah. And I think actually they work really really nicely. Or or the the Cambridge streamer which we reviewed recently. Yeah. That would work really nicely yep. as a streaming yep. preamp, um, and a, you know decent power amp. Yeah. And yep. kind of away you go. In yep. fact, the, the the new exposure power amp which is. Come, come out it would be yep. a fantastic sort of uh, component in Are that system. Are you an exposure fan, Mike? Yes, yeah, just a little bit. Just a little <laughs> How bit, many so. have you got again? Uh, I've got loads, <laughs> actually. So, You've yeah. got absolutely loads. We haven't really talked about my my six, seven, eight combination either, no. which is the baby ones. We should do a riff on those. Yeah. Because they're quite cool. Yeah, definitely. So, yes. Yeah. So you've got he's got about eight or nine exposure uh, amps have, from actually, yeah. from the from the I, past. I, and I've never owned the ten, which is probably their their yeah. you know their sort of. Um, their most sort of successful one. Yeah. So the, uh, how ironic. That, well, uh, just you know. kind of like weld together some of the the boxes and yes, sort of drive over it, squash it a bit, and you'd have a ten. Yeah, I think you? if I if I drove over those, it would write my car off. <laughs> it just built like tanks. Anyway, we digress. Yeah. Um, let's do a let's do a, a riffometer on yeah. the on the missions. What are you going to give them out so of ten? I'm going to give them uh, a uh, solid eight. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm I'm definitely not going to go any lower than an eight. Okay. Um, because I think they they do so, they do a lot of things really really well, but I think it's on the money, isn't it? Eight out of ten, it's yeah. about right. I, I think you'd I think we'd have people watching this who would happily give them ten out of ten. Yeah. Because if if it I think it needs to be your thing. It's and taste. It's, it's and very, much speakers, so, yeah. very much so. Very much so. And I think you and I yeah. dare I say quite similar in our speaker taste. Yeah. Um, and they're just a little bit puppy dog from for us. Yeah, I think the the thing to do, the thing to point out though, is that they they do kind of, even though the the drive units are different to the originals and the cabinets and so on, they do very much capture the original spirit of the seven hundreds, the original yes. seven hundreds from the early eighties, which were, in real terms, a, a far more flawed speaker than the new seven hundreds. But they also had that sort of uh, puppy dog. You know, let's let's have a party. They weren't Radio Two. They weren't Radio Three. They were very much Radio One, with uh, you know, kind yes, of Gary yeah. Davis, uh, absolutely uh, playing, uh, you know, sort oh. of eighties chart hits or something. Weren't yes, they? Yeah. loud. Yes, quite. So, yeah, quite. Yeah, banging tunes, as as the young people say these days. Yes, so I'm told. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. I've no idea what you're talking about. No, I haven't either. <laughs> anyway, there we are. Uh, thank you very much indeed for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. And we hope we'll see you at the next one. Thanks a million. Bye. Bye. Bye.